construction worker does this versus Go. And I don't see it being um, feasible in the near term for computer vision to reliably distinguish between these two critical things, not in the near term. And this is absolutely critical decision for you how to make. Do you stop or do you go? Um, but I think the way to solve that is by making modest infrastructure changes. Give the construction worker a Wi-Fi beacon, a wireless beacon to clarify the communication. So I think with modest changes to infrastructure and how construction happens and how we operate the roads, we're within striking distance of making cars safe. And because self-driving cars, they don't ever get drunk, they don't you know, get distracted by texting, uh, we can engineer them to not have any blind spots and see behind, behind the back as well as in front, um, they will be safer than human-driven cars. But they're also fundamentally different than human-driven cars. And the way to make them safe is not to try really hard to make them just like human-driven cars, is to realize that just like trains are different than horses, you should not be trying to make a train behave the same as a horse. You should be operating a train differently than a horse. And once we do that, with modest changes to societal expectations, to the infrastructure we build, uh, I think we can land self, I think we make self-driving cars a reality they will be much safer than human driven cars. Does that analogy expand beyond cars? I, was, I, I heard that, the, the idea that, so, so we don't just want to try to make this thing as intelligent as a human per se, but we really need to take advantage of the other pieces that, that computers can, can take advantage of, right? Like so a Wi-Fi beacon or, or other integrated technologies, right? To really build kind of an immersive platform, I guess, for doing this. So AI is just a, a, a part of it. It's not, it's not the, 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 the end, beginning and end. Yeah, and yeah, I think so. And I think in Silicon Valley, we often think of you know government as the problem rather than the solution. But I think self-driving cars is one example uh, that will require a public-private partnership uh, uh, to to figure this out. And you know, I don't know, depending on how you think about the numbers, right? Uh, your children uh, will spend three years of their life in a car, right, in the commutes. Uh, and, your, and, and your children's life expectancy will be shortened by about three years because of the chance of them getting an automobile accident. Uh, most of us are older, so we've already spent many years of our lives on so top of you know, young, young children. But so I think self driving cars could potentially expand, ex, extend the you know, maybe effective life expectancy of our children by six years, and that's huge. Uh, so I would love to move to a reality where all of us waste less time producing, driving back and forth. Um, but it will take this slightly shifted perspective of, of, of self-driving cars in reality. So I'm very excited. And you know, I think in data science, actually Derek mentioned to me, one of the themes that often resonates in data science conferences is the notion of uh, 